do you believe so since you're saying that do you believe that as a believer in the messiah you are a descendant of abraham through faith do you believe that yes okay cool and you already said you're part of the abrahamic covenant genesis 17 verses uh i'll start here at verse 7. i will confirm my covenant as a perpetual covenant this is the most high talking between me and you it will extend to your descendants after you throughout their generations i will be your elohim and the elohim of your descendants after you i will give the whole land of canaan the land where you are now residing to you and your descendants as a permanent possession i will be their elohim then elohim said to abraham as for you you must keep the covenant requirement i am imposing on you and your descendants after you throughout their generations this is my requirement that you and your descendants after you must keep every male among you must be circumcised you must circumcise the flesh of your foreskin this will be a reminder of the covenant between me and you throughout your generations every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised whether born in your house or bought with money from any foreigner who is not one of your descendants they must be circumcised whether born in your house or bought with money the sign of my covenant will be vis visible in your flesh as a permanent reminder any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin will be cut off from his people he has failed to carry out my requirement how do you synthesize this right here with also believing that you are now through faith a descendant of abraham and then saying you don't have to be circumcised. How, how do you synthesize all of that? And then not call it sin by doing something that is required that the, that the Most High Himself said, if you're part of this Abrahamic covenant and you're one of His descendants, you must do. How do you how do you synthesize all of that? Well, Paul has already addressed this. You know, um, <clears throat> believe in First Corinthians. Actually, let me pull up the the verse because, uh, like I've said, um. The circumcision law was given to the physical descendants of Abraham. Because I believe that I'm part of the covenant in the sense that he was promised that through him, his offspring will be uh, will be blessed and there will be a blessing to other nations. So I'm the other nations. So when God gives a covenant to the children of Israel through Moses, he gives them these laws such as circumcision laws. But other nations were not given these laws. I'm part of those other nations. And Paul here clearly, you know, um, touches on the question he just asked. Live as you are called. So, okay, I was called as an um as a as a heathen from out of you know, out of paganism into the the covenant that God made with Abraham through Christ. So I have faith in Christ. Only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him. And to which God has called him, this is my rule to all the churches. Was anyone at the time of this of his call already circumcised? Okay, a Jew. Let him not seek to remove the marks of circumcision. So if you're not circumcised, don't you know, don't remove the marks of circumcision. Was anyone at that time of his call uncircumcised? Let him not seek circumcision. For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision. So these things were fulfilled in Christ, so they don't, you know, they've been fulfilled, okay, not abolished. So if you want to circumcise yourself, that's fine. But keeping the commandments of God, okay, again, the commandments of, of God. How is Paul making a distinction between circumcision and the commandments, commandments of God? Each, each one should remain in the condition in which he was called. Were you a born servant, you know? Ancient, you know, slaves were black like servants. Okay, you sell yourself, you know, to like a rich person and you work for them. Were you called as a slave? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can gain your freedom, avail yourself of the opportunity. For he who was called in the Lord as a bond servant is a freed man in the Lord. Likewise, he who was free when he was called is a bond servant of Christ. You were bought with a price and not to become bond servants of men. So, brothers, in whatever condition each was called, let him remain with God, okay? So, if you're called in a condition where you're uncircumcised, 
there's no need to be circumcised. Now, Paul makes it very clear, but you should still keep the commandments of God. Now, what are the commandments of God? Let me just pull up this passage here. Okay, let me start from 7. Now, therefore, it is already an utter failure for you that you go to the law against one another. Okay? They were having a lot of disagreements about the law. Why do you not rather accept wrong? Why do you not rather let yourself be cheated? No, you yourself do wrong and cheat, and you do these things in to your brethren. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom, kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Now, these are the laws that we should, you know, keep again as a, as a Christian, a gentle believer in Christ. Neither fornicators, okay? No fornicators. These are the commandments of God. No idolaters, no adulterers, no homosexuals, no sodomites, no thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. You can see that a lot of these were part of the Ten Commandments. And you did mention about the Sabbath law. Okay, that's a, that's a very interesting law. And maybe one day we can get into that. Because I don't believe that as a, as a Christ follower should observe the Sabbath. Now, Paul here in verse 11, he says, And such were some of you, but you were washed and you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Christ Jesus by the Spirit of our God. So if you were once a thief, still no more. If you were once a covetous, don't covet anymore. If you were once a homosexual, okay, don't be a homosexual anymore because that's unloving to your neighbor. Okay, if you're homosexual, please <laughs> But anyways, guys, the point is, people in the comment think that I'm, I'm advocating for, you know, being immoral or living a lawless uh, lifestyle. No, I'm simply saying that the laws that you guys are saying, for example, um, like Caleb, you did mention uh, in circumcision. Abraham was commanded to, to be circumcised and, and circumcised descendants. in his descendants. True. But I'm saying that his descendants were Israel. In particular, you know, Jacob. Now, um, I believe his twin was uh, was also circumcised. Esau. But you can see that, yeah, Esau. You can see that by the lineage goes with Israel. And Paul here makes it very clear that if you were not circumcised, then there's no need to because that law was given to Israel and that law was fulfilled in Christ, the Messiah, because the Messiah had to be circumcised on the eighth day. And that's very clear in the scripture that he was circumcised on the eighth day day the messiah kept it you know the diet laws because he was a jew and i know there's a gentleman here who's just said um so jesus kept the dietary law on your behalf no 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 i don't think jesus did anything on my behalf okay he didn't keep the laws on my behalf i'm simply saying that i'm not an israelite so i didn't have to observe that law because that law was given to him now by him fulfilling he fulfilled the law of moses and you were seen perfect and righteous. But for, for me, I don't have to. But yes, let's hear Yahoo's. Um, oh, okay, so that, I'll, oh, okay. Yes. I'll, I'll ask him. Uh, which one, me or him? You can go Caleb and then Yahoo can. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Go, go ahead, Caleb. One of the things I want to say really quick, I noticed that all, of, all the verses you're using are coming from Paul. And the thing that is very important to realize about Paul, Paul's writing letters, right? So because Paul is writing letters, he's writing to a group of people that have a specific problem, sometimes in a specific area that has to be taken into consideration and has to be utilized in this context. So when Paul is listing those things, but he's not listing things like, let's say, the Sabbath day or things like that. The reason why he's listing those things is because the people he's writing the letter to are struggling with those issues. Right. It doesn't mean that since he said that's that's all he mentioned, that's all we have to do. He's writing to a specific group of people that are dealing with a specific group of things. So that has to also be taken into consideration. A, a letter that's if I write a letter to you, I'm writing it with very personal things to you. That doesn't mean that it can't be useful to somebody else. Right. In fact, let's very specific example. If I'm writing a letter to you about how to start a business and you have a very specific business, I'm writing that letter to you. It's meant for you you are the target audience everything there is written in consideration for how you start your personal business now other people who might be starting another business they can absolutely use that letter right but that letter 
cannot be used to nullify or to replace or to thoroughly explain general entrepreneurial principles that have already been laid down that people have been doing for thousands of years. Because I might tell you to do something that is not necessarily different, but very specific. I might give you a very specific instruction for the type of business that you're trying to start, that if a person is doing a completely different kind of business, they might not need to do that at all. You see what I mean? So Paul's letters are very, they're written to a group of people and each people has, each group has a set of issues. An example of that is in one of the letters, and, the, and this one actually, I don't believe is Paul, just think, stating off memory, where it, it says something along the lines of women need to be quiet in the assembly. Women need to be quiet in the church. That's not a commandment. That's something that was going on in that area. And he was dealing with that, where there was something because of the culture in that area, women in general were always trying to reign over men. It was like something that was praised in that area. So in that area, he was addressing that issue. That's not a commandment. Paul is giving very specific, again, not saying what Paul is saying is wrong, but what I'm saying is it has to be taken into consideration that he's mentioning these things because those are the things that those people were struggling with. It doesn't mean that's all you have to do because he's not talking to you in that letter. I completely agree, but I, it seems like um, those guys were having the same dilemma me and you are having. So Paul is addressing this particular dilemma about circumcision and whether you should be that circumcised. Was the second thing. Yeah, that was the second thing. The verse you pulled up about circumcision and uncircumcision, that's not talking about the act of circumcision. That's talking about people. So sometimes the Jews were called circumcised and sometimes the Gentiles were called the uncircumcised. That's even in the Old Testament um, where you have people who are called the uncircumcised. They're the Gentile. So that that's what that verse is talking about. It's not talking about the act of circumcision itself. Yeah, but that, that, that whole concept originates from the physical um, act of circumcision. But it's talking about the people. It's not talking about yes. the act of circumcision. It's talking about the people who are circumcised versus the people who aren't. That's why some of the other things mentioned are things like being a servant, which has nothing to do with being circumcised. And then it also so, says, don't try to remove the marks of your circumcision. Why would somebody try to do that? Because they're trying to appear as though they're not a Jew. That's the only reason why they're trying to do that. That was something that was done back in those days. Yeah, but the church of Cor in Corinthians was, oh, I was made up of Jews and non-Jews, people who were circumcised, people who were not circumcised physically. Yes, but they lived in Corinth. And again, there were lots yeah. of people who would want to appear non-Jewish. So they would intentionally go through and do things to make themselves look uncircumcised. 